Oh. How are you, how are you failing at this? I thought this was an award-winning podcast. And you didn't record the first oh, 10 minutes as God. soon as I rolled on. This you know what? This did get the award for the best worst podcast out there. <laughs> so it is and is it a Razzie? With the least amount of colors. So I'm just... that makes sense. And I'm here to help you with that. This is a uh, queer eye in a weird way, but not really. I'm ready, please, because <laughs> I need, you know what? Black, white, and then gray to just judge it up. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> this is why I didn't want to come to your house. There was no life. <laughs> Everything is sterile. <laughs> you walk into my house and it looks like a black and white TV show. You're like, is this, where's is the this, color? Is this WandaVision? I'm in WandaVision. <laughs> yeah, it's episode one. So um, after you come in, we'll get to episode two where there's actual color in there. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, That's I need to, next time, oh, we'll make this like an annual thing or something. We'll have We should the paint mo- on the next one that we do together. We paint a wall whatever color I show up with and you got to be okay with it. And the next thing you know, we're doing an HGTV channel or station or show. And, oh. um, you know, oh we're printing God. money as we speak. So this would be wonderful. Then we can be the worst, still the worst podcast ever, but that's fine. <laughs> yeah. We can't change anything about that. I mean, that's deeply rooted in my personality, but <laughs> beyond that, we can make it look good. So bring whatever colors you have. And then Oh my gosh. You know what? I'm just going to jump into it. Everybody welcome to a comedy advice podcast with Stefan Satani in not living color. I'm just in black and white, but welcome. I, I also want to welcome my special guest. She is the mid morning radio host of alt AZ 93.3. Mo. Hello. Hello. Thank you for having me. I'm sorry. I steered you off on so many different avenues before we got to the street we we're supposed to be on. My oh, apologies. you know what? <laughs> Life is a highway and I want to drive it all night long. So we, we got on that note, I'm hanging up. (laughs) (laughs) We we did take it to a few detours, but Hey, if you're on a road trip, you got to stop every once in a while and take a picture because that's what it's all about. Right. You never know if that giant ball of yarn will be there the next time you pass by it. So you might as well just take the picture, you know, and I am that giant ball of yarn. So, oh, and good. we will untangle this giant ball of yarn with each. I'm not ready for passes. therapy. I am not ready for therapy. <laughs> tell, tell us how you really feel, Mo. No, but Mo, I am so excited. We were talking a little bit about redecorating and the and your background and all these great things. And I also it made me think of the great taste you have and the great visual astuteness. I don't even know if that's a word, but I'm gonna make it one. Craft I like it. it. But you and and your girlfriend Ray, the Mo and Ray mm-hmm. vlog, oh beautiful aesthetics, wonderful <laughs> editing. Did you quit it? Because I saw the last episode was three weeks ago. So, not necessarily. I needed to okay. rethink it. Uh, okay. You know, Ray is an amazing editor. She's an amazing videographer, photographer, and. It's not the reason why I'm dating her, but it's a plus. You know what I mean? (laughs) Haters might say I'm only dating her for that, but that's not at all it. She's just amazing as a person in general. But um, if you see, I was going to say to the listeners, (laughs) if you guys see any one of those vlogs, like you you guys are hilarious, you guys are real. But I think it was the first episode that I saw. It was episode number one. And you guys Mm -hmm. are goddamn adorable together. It's... (laughs) You guys are so funny. Like she kisses you um, on your way to work and you get in your car and go. And, and then she goes to see you and you're in your car and you're like, Hey, you want to buy some drugs? And <laughs> yeah, you just totally. make it super funny. <laughs> and, and then she, I think it was the last episode where she learned to cook something new because you usually cook. And it was so freaking sweet to see. I, I got satiated again. My belly is just full <laughs> of love right now. Because it's just, it's so nice to see, especially when there's just negativity and negativity and, and you just see these bright, beautiful colors. And then the, the feelings that you guys have for each other. It's, it's wonderful. So I don't think anybody ever just, uh, thank you. I was going to say, I don't think anybody has ever said anything like that. And that's why I quit. Um, No, we stopped doing it because actually uh, my life got a little bit busier and it was hard for me to. And I still want to do it, but I feel like it needs a direction. You know, a lot of the vlogs, uh, I want to tell more of a story. Whereas like lately I haven't been in the, uh, like filmmaker mentality of like what looks good. 
uh, what am I trying, what's the purpose of this one? And I think, right. yeah, it's definitely going to change up here a bit, but I've been like doing so many other random projects too, not just with the station, which is a whole other world, but, mm-hmm. uh, you know, trying out a new podcast as well. And yes. just, uh, trying to balance, man, balance is the hardest thing for me right now. So, you know, um, I don't know. I think Eventually I'll, I'll get to that vlog. <laughs> oh, nice. I was going to say, I think Olivia Jade, she was doing that daily quoted Dion everyday type things. And then she judged it up with a college admission scandal. So you could do something <laughs> like <laughs> I mean, I, oh, that, I mean, I mean, it upped her followers. No, I think. It, I know, seriously. <laughs> but well, I need to start a scandal. That's the problem. That's <laughs> yes. I'm missing out. <laughs> oh man. And speaking of scandalous, your new podcast, which is not scandalous at all, but I just forced transitions because I don't know better. <laughs> but Mostalgia is also an incredibly amazing podcast where you and new co host Robert, Rob, Robert, Rob, Rob Roberto. I just call him Roberto. Nighttime Rob. Uh, <laughs> so I, he I sounds like do- Robitussin. I love it. <laughs> Uh, sometimes when you listen to him, you kind of feel like that. So it's fine. I was like, well, side effects perfect. include drowsiness. And- <laughs> Dude, I'm going to totally make a commercial about the podcast now talking about Rob as Robitussin. Robitussin. <laughs> We're calling him Robitussin. Robitussin. <laughs> Beautiful, beautiful. He already hates all of the nicknames I've given him. When he would join me on the morning show back when I was doing that, I would call him Sunshine Rob. He's like, don't call me that. And so I do it and everyone else loves it except him because of course, you know, he, he's yes. that. I just picture him <laughs> as, do you remember those old Jimmy Dean uh, commercials where he's the giant son and it's just the, the dude in the costume? I just Photoshop his face on there. I'm pretty sure I have it. I'm going to oh show you. Oh my God. Incredible. But yeah, Rob is fantastic. He's one of my favorite people. And we did a podcast together. Uh, and then we, I took another like three week break until mm-hmm. I realized I'm like, you know what? I just need to do a podcast with him. Like we have to do something nice. because we always have such a great time talking. He cracks me up and, mm-hmm. you know, we uh, we're really good uh, at contrasting like here. Let me see. Okay. You can kind of maybe not. I see. I don't oh, don't look at his number. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't worry. I'll blur that out. That's <laughs> Rob's going to get like, a lot of calls number. now. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, it's okay. Uh, Nobody's talking to him anyway, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> he could, yeah, he could use the company, but, uh, but no, <laughs> love. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no, no. But what's crazy about Rob is Rob has not been outside like of his, for the most part, he hasn't really been outside of his apartment since the pandemic kicked off. He hasn't come, he works from home and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And I find that fascinating because he's really one of the few people that are still doing it, you know, like still holding true. Everybody's all excited to go out and do stuff. I mean, I'm guilty of it. I went to Vegas and I, you know, not saying that I shouldn't have, but I definitely felt guilty while I was there. (laughs) Yeah, no, Uh, I I agree. And I remember hearing that he ended up going to Prescott because if you volunteer, you can get vaxxed. And he got it. He found a slot last minute and Prescott didn't have a car. And he was like, well, I'll figure it out. And uh, ended up doing that. But totally. (laughs) You did your research. uh, It's awesome. (laughs) (laughs) But I, I agree. My wife and I were so good. And we started to, I mean, on this podcast, I'll have some guests and they have shows. And so I'll go to a show and try and be as safe as possible. But I believe I may have gotten the Rona from one of the shows. Yeah. Who got, so. yeah. So before uh, I was actually supposed to come to your house yeah, until you told yes. me, Yes. Uh, oh. well, I mean, I was still going to go anyways, but you told me and I was freaking <laughs> out. I was like, why wouldn't you tell me <laughs> sooner? We've been planning this for a month now. (laughs) I am so sorry. Because I also, I I wouldn't have told you if it wasn't for my dear wife, who was like, oh my God, I'm getting a FaceTime call. Hold on. Let's answer it. Bring him in. Bring him in. Oh, oh, dang it. You're like, I'm on with my therapist right now. (laughs) (laughs) But but she was like, go go ahead, go ahead. No, I was like, this is actually what it would look like because you definitely have the bland wall and everything going. So, it's oh, my, but- yes, exactly. And I don't want the secrets to get out. So that's why I have the sound panels. So it just reverberates. Your problems go right back to you. Was um, that HIPAA? If it doesn't OSHA? have it. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're certified from them. Oh man. And this is my this is my professional do because I also <laughs> I've got my quarantine cut where I don't know if you can see it, but I was I was gonna say you were rocking a, a hard man bun, you know. That is a uh, it's really nice. It, it is congratulations. So- Thank you. It's such a hard man bun. It's like one of those Cinnabons that's been out too long. And it's just, oh, wait, wait, though. I was trying to figure out what that frosting was in the back. Oh, oh, <laughs> dude. Wow. You look like an, like you were on brink or something. What <laughs> is going on with, is this the style that's coming back or is like. I don't, I think it may come back until everyone realizes how stupid it is. But <laughs> I, I see, I was being good. I haven't gotten a haircut because. It was like having to go through prohibition to get a uh, freaking haircut because you'd have to knock. They'd be like password, be like snip, snip. They'd be like, this isn't a circumcision. I'd be like, okay, what? Cut, cut. I don't know. So anyway, I, I, I've been growing it out and, you know, it's kind of okay. I think somebody called me. They said I looked like a tall Lord Farquaad. So oh I'll take that. Oh my God. As... Yes. <laughs> yes. That like has, you, you know come out of quarantine you got a little bit of a beard going on too like oh god dude. it was so much longer as well i shaved it for this episode <laughs> for today because i finally and by the way i we, i did google it and it looks like we were in the clear for contagious span but still to be courteous and i admit i was a total d-bag and my wife agrees so um i mo i deeply apologize and no. if i can make it up to you <laughs> i know you like the hibiscus tea from last time so i will bring it a costco bundle for you and um oh anyway. my god this stuff was so delicious it it was the color of my enemy's blood and that's why i enjoy <laughs> drinking it you remember that. I hope you do. Uh, I do remember that. Beautiful. <laughs> your wife is the sweetest, but also I'm just so glad that you guys are okay because I know this whole thing is just wild. I've definitely had some family members uh, uh, get it. And uh, like my grandma was in the hospital and she was oh. like, uh, on a respirator and everything, but she like made it out. And so it's great oh, and I'm glad, but dude, stuff is crazy. So yes. just trying to stay as cautious as possible. Yes, exactly. And it's, it's no joke. My, my uncle too, he ended up having to go. He almost, he almost died. I think if it wasn't for my aunt, that was like, you're acting silly. And uh, (laughs) I I don't know what he was doing. He was trying to type five or something, but she was like, you're acting very silly. We need to call the ambulance. And then his oxygen was super low. And so he, (laughs) I thought she was like, you're faking it. And he's like, you're right. I'm sorry. He's like, like, I don't want to go to work today. He's like, like, I'll step back in line. I'm sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I should have rephrased that with a better word, but it's all good. Oh, that's that's the um, world I want that to live. So, (laughs) (laughs) oh, and live it shall. But anyway, I um, agreed. It is crazy stuff, and people, please be careful. But um, so speaking. Go ahead. Uh, well, I wanted to ask you this because last time we actually uh, did this podcast, it was a completely different name and you've completely yes. changed it up. I think people were taking over your account on Instagram for a little bit. I was like, did he get hacked? Like blink twice if you're okay. I wasn't <laughs> sure what was going on, <laughs> but now I'm just happy that you've continued it. And I've been enjoying some of these posts that you've been doing. They, you've got some great people on here. Oh. I feel honored to be a part of it. So thank you. Oh, oh my God. Best worst <laughs> podcast ever. Thanks guys. I, I didn't never thought I'd make it here. <laughs> I'm going to put that in the bio as a quote, best worst <laughs> podcast ever. No. But <laughs> thank you so much. And, and it has been a wild ride. And I was, I, you know, before for all the listeners that are newbies, welcome, but also just a little background. It wasn't always a comedy advice podcast. It used to be called hyperbroly mm-hmm. and It turns out, because I tried to put a pun in there with my two brothers that were part of the podcast at the time, but then they quit because they hate me. And then also, it turns out people can't say, uh, remember, speak, write hyperbole because it sounds dumb. And so it just wasn't gaining as much traction as I thought it should be. So I changed it to super generic, a comedy advice podcast. And now that SEO is getting us to the top of the rankings in Apple podcasts and all that stuff. So that's it. People just go as generic as possible. 
<laughs> Go ahead, sorry. When I first, what I originally kept thinking that it was not hyperbole. I thought it was like hyperboil. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where. <laughs> I was like, so, I don't know how crazy these boils get, but they're hyper <laughs> AF. That, and it's that was wild. the first. Yeah, that was the first iteration because I had a mad sick boil. And uh, so we, we talked about it for the Lanced first 30 it, episodes. Cleaned it. <laughs> that was the end of season one. We ended up lancing it. It was the boil took over the Instagram too for a while. That was crazy. I so <laughs> some very weird angles you're getting. <laughs> Selfies oh. are looking rough lately. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, this is bringing me to tears. But yes. Yeah, so, went through a rebrand and then also started taking a different approach to the IG because I, I thought, okay, how can we get more followers? How can we get more engagement? And the takeovers were fine. But then I was like, you know what? I really want to be able to have some content that people like and see where it's, if it's just a picture, it seems like they were like, okay, new person. But if it's a video with something funny and relatable, mm -hmm. then it seems like they're clicking on that more and giggling more. So I'm trying it out. I don't know if it's, uh, who knows where tomorrow will bring. I don't know. I know exactly. But I think you're doing it right. You know, people off, off bat, they want to be entertained. I mean, that's why everybody's glued to freaking TikTok. So if you have something that's entertaining on your podcast that you want to share, it should be the first thing because you want it to grab people to pull them in. You know, you're, yes. you're just lassoing people in with your comedy. And I never thought that, well <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> oh, I was just going to say something very important. Yes, the lassoing at Cottonwood, Arizona is where I learned. So um, <laughs> whether it be figuratively or literally, I am the lasso king. So that's my license plate, actually. Lasso king. It's not the whole Shut word. up. Shut up. <laughs> You're going to make me stop this podcast, the Lasso King. <laughs> oh, God, that should be my gamer name on Twitch. Yeah. Lasso I king. mean, are you on Twitch? No, I'm not. Not yet. But Jesus. Oh, I know. I you know, know what, dude? I am such, I love playing video games, but God, it is so difficult for me to Twitch because I feel like you have to entertain people while you're gaming. And I'm like, I'm just focused on like, I'm just grinding right now. I'm like hunting for things. I don't have time to entertain you. Okay. I'm entertaining myself. And that's why I'm really bad at Twitch. You so know go what? and follow me at Moro Radio. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I was going to say my brothers and and me we have something called the game face which is we cannot concentrate enough we can't even say anything but when we play video games our lips the bottom lip just droops ever so much <laughs> and we go like this so my wife pointed that out ever so kindly by posting it on Instagram with all of us and we're just like, Why am I not following her? <laughs> God. Oh my God. But anyway, yeah, it, it's uh, that, the game face. So we ended up, uh, so I, basically I cannot go on Twitch is what I'm trying to say. Cause I cannot entertain people while playing video games at the same time. And I was going to go back a couple steps on the videos just to say that I really admire Ray's work because I have been trying to get more into all the video editing and stuff. And I got Final Cut Pro and I've been playing around with that. Nice. And I'm like, this is a, a whole new, I don't know if I can say that, but you know, the rest of the Go song. Go ahead. I, I think there I was going to say, don't you dare close your eyes. <laughs> and then I was going to hold you. And then I was going to roll up on a uh, magic carpet. So. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> it's so good. Right. Well, you know what? Next episode, if we have, if, if you have car troubles, <laughs> Shut magic <up>. carpet. <laughs> get you a plunger for bringing up old shit god damn it <laughs> i love that all right well mo i was gonna hmm, hold on i want to roll in the deep with you just really okay. quickly with a car I'm that ready, works okay, i was gonna, i was gonna say i uh, mo show last time you were early morning now yes. you are mid-morning and I've seen, you've interviewed some of the greatest people that I look up to for entertainment. Uh, you talked about on Amigos PC interviewing Burt Kreischer, which was super oh cool. God. And you're so, you pay attention to details so much and you're so caring and kind to your guests where you asked him on Twitter, hey, what do you want for breakfast? And he was like, breakfast burritos, mimosas. That's kind of like Burt Kreischer actually. That and totally uh, <laughs> pretty good, dude. 
keep going. I, I was pretty close. Take, if, take your shirt off. It's Burt Kreischer. <laughs> the machine. Um, but, but anyway, you got it for him. And he was like, oh my God, this is amazing. I'll tell you anything you want, which I think is so cool. And uh, I remember last time you were talking about this interview with Steve-O where these types of guests, they're so big and they get interviewed so much and you're able to find the different buttons and, and get them interested by whether it's taking out of the mainstream questions and going into some more um, uh, less known things like with Steve-O, I think it was his tattooing and yeah. as well as get important information out of them from the things that, that maybe you want or the listeners want to hear. And I've, I want to call out specifically one of the oh, no. best interviews I have oh, no. ever heard. And I think this should probably be an interview for like a class on learning how to interview where that terrifies <laughs> me. I don't, I don't know where you're going, but I'm like, I don't know, man. <laughs> Just go ahead. No. Uh, so, so it was when you did an IG live with machine gun Kelly. I knew you're going to fucking bring that up. Oh my God. That is my worst interview ever ever it's i the one thought, no, 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 no no go ahead go it's ahead the you one, say your piece all right look so on the day that i was interviewing machine gun kelly on instagram live it was my first day not being on a morning show and i was already having some weird feeling about that and i was mm -hmm. doing middays and then doing this interview and i was it already went off to a bad start in my opinion because he got on he wasn't paying attention his phone was like facing the ceiling while he was walking around talking to other people. Yeah. So I'm like trying to just get his attention. And I was going to be cunty and be like, Hey dude, are you going to pay attention? Or like, <laughs> what is this? But I was right. like, you know, this is a big artist right now. We're playing a lot of his music. Like I like just be professional and, you know, button up. So right, right. I do it. I ask superficial questions in the beginning and then he fucking lays into me about the damn superficial questions. And that haunts me in every interview that I've done since then is I Re always think about that. Okay. Let me tell you my perspective of it. Okay. This, okay. I, I see you talking with him and the same thing happening. He's walking, trying to find keys to his car or something. So he's walking back and forth in his house, not fully paying attention. You're asking questions that are trying to just break the ice, open up conversation, yeah. I feel. Talking about, I think he opened up a coffee shop and he also had his new album and you're like, what you're more excited about? Joking, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then he, he didn't appreciate the, or not appreciate, but he didn't get the joke, I guess. And yeah. then- he started, after you asked some more questions, he, he started to lay into you. Well, challenge you, I think. Mm -hmm. And and you, like, I, I was sweating at that point because I was like, oh my God, this, I, I've had some interviews where things have gone awry. And you, he was asking, like, ask something serious about the album. And then you did it. You went way deep. And he was like, that's a great question. And then he even apologized at the end because I think he knew he was being not as professional as he could be and he didn't pay as much attention as he should in the beginning but then you opened him up and i feel like i don't know what's going on in the world of machine gun kelly but he you were able to lasso it in lasso queen right here and be able to get some good answers from him and and hold your composure because i would have been trembling and shaking at that point so what I'm trying to say is you're so dynamic. You're able to go from superficial to super deep really quickly and, and on the, at the turn of a button and be able to produce a really good interview and have, I think he enjoyed it too. Cause then another thing he said was I was listening to you before I came on and you were mentioning some of the stuff you like. So I knew that you were really into the album and stuff like that. So that scared me also. Cause like, Oh my gosh, do people do all this research. But anyway, <laughs> long winded way of saying, fantastic job because I thought that was a stellar interview that was right. the hardest interview I think I've ever done like one of the definitely top number one interview that was the hardest but can I just tell you something I spent time listening to the album that weekend before it uh before I did the interview and he he did say something <laughs> pretty funny he was like look at the way look at you you look like you would be a fan of mine you look like you like the music and I'm thinking I fucking hated the album so much. I can't handle this regurgitated Blink-182 
album. It bothered me so much. I was cringing sometimes during the songs and I'm just like, yeah, I totally loved it. It was so good. I could <laughs> not tell you how much I loved it. It was that much. It was that much. It was uh, so it, regurgitated. It had bits of Blink-182. As it, as it was regurgitated, you saw, you're you like, oh, is that Travis Barker in there? And dude, there were there are parts in that album, and the way that he sings, I could already hear Tom coming in and then Mark coming in. And, you know, it's, and I, and I get it, you know, it's, it's something that was produced by Travis Barker. Right, um, right. And, but at the same time, it's like, you can't really tell everybody the truth because then it's going to come off really bad. Like this is going to get even worse. And I was like, this is already off to a bad start. Do I just be a total cunt or do I just really just be the girl that be professional? And I, I chose the higher road, but my thoughts are still true. <laughs> you know what? Even better than you've elevated this dish another layer because the f I, I, I bought into it. I was like, dang, she really enjoys this album. This is great. So good on you. Have you, by the way, have you ever on an interview had to be a, a C word? A cunt? A C, a C yeah, next cunt. Tuesday? <laughs> um, I, I giggled so like a little school girl. Of, I know. Seriously. Who are you? It's the long um, hair. It's chasing. <laughs> I know. Seriously. You're reverting back to your younger years. Let me get you some rollerblades. <laughs> um, I, I don't think maybe no actually not at all i have not been i've not been that person because there's a lot of people that are having a bad day and that you don't know it you don't know what went on before you sat down and chatted with these people they could be going through something that they like that they don't want to share and same here you know i could be going through something that right. i don't want to share but i'm an open book so i'll tell everybody everything but uh you know i guess i just I want to get deep with people. And sometimes the best way to do it is just to glide in slowly. And so, yeah, right, I don't think right. I've ever really been super mean to anyone unless they've like done me wrong, but that's really mm. it. So that's, yeah, that's I totally hold grudges fair. hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh no. I'm thinking back what I Jesus, said. Jesus, Are you seriously having the Rona right now, dude? I, I, I'm so no, glad I no. didn't show up. <laughs> you know you actually okay? i was i have i i redecorated the place i used to have three chairs now i have two, uh -huh. six feet apart i was gonna have you on this side so the window you could have it open and i was gonna be on my bane mask the whole time hello and welcome to a comedy advice podcast i was gonna wear my mandalorian helmet when i came in <laughs> oh man this is the way that we should have done it Damn it. No, I know. I'm sad. Now I'm like, where's another helmet I could wear during this whole thing? <laughs> I have a, a T-Rex costume. I think I told you I was going to put that on. I have my double dare helmet I could wear, but it's not covering anything but my eyes and my head. So oh, it's yeah, signed it. and it's signed by Mark Summers of Double Dare, the original host, who is amazing in my opinion, but that's just me. I, are you old enough to know what Double Dare is? Double Dare from Nickelodeon. The where... game show. Oh my God. I can't remember because the ones that I remember are Knights of the Hidden Temple or something of the Hidden Temple. Legends of the Hidden Temple. There we go. That's it. And <laughs> I, I didn't have cable. My parents thought that Nickelodeon <laughs> was for the devil. And so I, you and Ray both, man. Uh, did, were you guys raised by the same people? Was it a they, Christian house? <laughs> it was very Catholic. Very oh, Catholic. Oh, oh. Yes. I mean, you're Italian, right? So yes. of course. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That makes perfect exactly. sense. Now it's all coming together full circle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And there were five of us, five kids. So obviously oh. my parents didn't like to watch TV either, um, or was broken, but <laughs> that's, a, that's for another podcast. They, that's that's awesome. why they didn't believe in cable. They were busy. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever heard your parents have sex before? <laughs> oh God. Uh, no, I have not. However, I did walk in on them post coitus <laughs> and <laughs> it was, it was almost exactly like one of those Da Vinci paintings where the, oh, they were both naked and, and the, the, the sheets were just draped ever so, um, sensually on them. And it was almost like they, they weren't snuggling, but they were almost touching fingers from each side of the bed. <laughs> looking at each other longingly and i can't tell you for how many weeks i threw up corona was better than that 
I, ugh, ugh. and so yeah, that, that was the one and only time I ever ugh, saw anything. Thank God. But. I have walked in multiple times, but I did walk in uh, <laughs> once when my mom was dating this guy and uh, you know, my mom and this dude were heavier set people, similar situation. Oh. Doesn't look quite as, you know, one, it's your parent, your mom and her boyfriend. So you're like not thinking of it that way, but also it's just very weird. It, it was a lot. I saw a giant butt crack. I did not want to see. There was a lot going on there. Oh, uh, it's just, oh, it's, I, I feel like I need at least a graphic. year of therapy for getting <laughs> out of that. Cause it was, I didn't talk to that. And we didn't acknowledge that we saw okay. it. It was, oh, I, I heard my mom having sex a few times and but the first time I heard it it upset me I was mad I don't know why and like I wrote I like locked myself in my room I was so dramatic and I put I I left a handwritten note on her door saying I do not approve of what I heard last night and I do not want to talk to you until I'm ready and then I just and she came home and I'm sitting in my room being all like sullen and like whatever uh -huh. uh she goes up to the door and I can hear her go up there. And then she just busts out laughing her ass off. And then like, <laughs> I hear the paper paper crumble and she walks into her room <laughs> and I think, and then that was it. And then I was offended that she laughed at me. I think she thought, I thought it was, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I'm still working through my, my traumas right now. Hey, it's okay. <laughs> my parents, they never talked about it, but they did leave a rosary <laughs> hanging on the doorknob. So I knew <laughs> I would just pray that thing one decade and then i'd be okay i'm in the clear here so that's how we work through our problems mama's getting baptized right now son oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh god oh yes it is confirmation of that but we uh, i need a lot of reconciliation here just going through the sacraments and they thought i learned nothing but oh. Jesus Christ. So gross. Bless God. me. Yes. What's worse is I have more stories and that's not healthy for a child growing up. You have more. Oh, Lord. Okay, oh, I'll tell you, I'll tell you one more. Please. All right. God, I really do feel like I'm in therapy now. This is Zoom therapy. You're changing the podcast name again. I'm just letting you know that. Zoom well. therapy with Mo. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually thought that would be a really cool podcast to do is just like, me recording my therapy sessions and releasing them so everybody can hear all of my problems. I thought that would be kind of funny. Um, but then that I would probably, I wouldn't be as serious. I'd probably just be making fun of myself the whole time. So that's not mm -hmm. helpful. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's fair. So this one time I was six years old. My parents were divorced. My mm -hmm. mom, I woke up. I'll start this again because this is very <laughs> weird. We uh, lived, we all shared the same bed, my mom, my sister, and I, and I oh. remember I woke up in the middle of the night, mind you, it's a water bed. Of course. And I remember just getting a little motion sickness because it turns out my dad showed up and they banged in the water bed oh. while we were there. And I'm, I'm like, what is happening? This is a horrible Oh, and so maybe it's, the, yeah, yeah. Uh, Wait, mind you, you, I. You were six years old. So, Did you know what was happening? Or were you like, is daddy just thrusting just heard, into mommy? I just heard heavy breathing and, oh, baby, does that feel good? And then it was over within a matter of seconds. Shout out to dad. Uh, <laughs> and then I remember turning over saying, hey, dad, are you guys done yet? I have to go pee. And then they just both looked at me and they're like, yeah. And so I just roll out of bed. And uh, went to the bathroom. And by the time I came out, my dad was gone. And my mom was asleep. Oh, so, my yeah. God. That's. Uh... <laughs> it's horrible. I know. My that... mom is like, you can't tell anybody that story. It's so bad. I'm sorry. My mom was like a young mom. And so she was not obviously paying attention at that moment. So, yeah. Good that times. sounds like that sounds like that was the inspiration for I saw mommy kissing Santa Claus. That's... <laughs> And then he disappears into the it's night. Worse. <laughs> the worst. At least he left a gift. I mean, that's all I care about. <laughs> He's like, here's, oh, a went, huh? here's that cassette tape he asked for. Tim McGraw, <laughs> don't take the girl. 
dad'll be back that oh. tomorrow night I'm like ah! oh my <laughs> so gross sorry oh man graphic i haven't laughed <laughs> that hard in a long time i got raspy laugh i didn't i didn't even know i had that old man old man raspy laugh i tell you it's a real thing i had it old, earlier old man raspy yeah that's true oh my god i think that's a sign of becoming uh, that's why the hair is it's trying to keep me youthful <laughs> while the voice box is getting raspy <gasps> pretty soon i'm just going hello welcome to comedy advice podcast yeah. <laughs> next time you're on hello Mo, we have Mo. <laughs> I, don't oh even, I don't even smoke oh. i know i was like what is that 12 packs now a day <laughs> yeah. Jeez. this podcast is sponsored by marlboro but <laughs> I... all right well this has been a big old bundle of fun. We're going to get into the self-help portion. Well, we've already kind of opened that box, but we're going to try and see if we can help some others. So before we get into the questions, obviously yes. we've got an inspirational quote to help center us and jazz us up to answer these questions. So I'm before ready. I get into mine, I, Mo, I wanted to ask, you already had one, so you get a pass. That, that one can count. But do you have any other inspirational quotes that help motivate you when uh, you're not seeing enough color in your life? Don't sweat the petty things, pet the sweaty things. That's the only thing that will get anyone through. Why? Because it's, it's just a weird phrase to say. And it reminds you, it's not that big of a deal. Things are, exactly. things, it's inconvenient. Just touch something sweaty and you'll remind yourself why there's bigger things out there to worry about. <laughs> That's all I could think of. I don't know. I'm motivated and a little sweaty. <laughs> so I might pet myself <laughs> and then, and then go so into funny my too. quote. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Dang, me too. <laughs> okay. What's yours? Mine. Mine. The one that I've prepared is, by the way, is that a Mo original going back to yours? Uh, well, I'll say yes, because I don't think I've ever heard anyone say that before, except for my stepbrother. Uh, but he doesn't listen to this, so we'll just say it's me. <laughs> yes, it's you. I was thinking it was either you or Confucius, so I wasn't <laughs> sure. But It was actually um, <laughs> Buddha himself actually said that. <laughs> I, I saw it in Leviticus as well. But... <laughs> <laughs> and thou shalt pet sweaty things, not sweat the petty things. It was my favorite Machine Gun Kelly lyric. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, my quote that I've got is actually, it's not by a person whatsoever. It's by a robot. And the robot's oh name God. is Inspirobot. Uh, you know, Mo. What, did I have this segment when you were? I don't think you did. I don't think you did, but continue. Oh, okay. So Inspirobot, its main purpose in life is to be able to use AI to take some of the wisest words known to man or woman and just mash them together for a delicious inspirational quote. Oh, I'm hungry. Feeding. Oh, good. Good. Well, bon appetit, because this one, it's a, it's a hearty one. Um, this week, Inspirebot says, endings don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me that's the whole quote. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's it. That's the whole quote. fuck at all that is the <laughs> really shit i've ever heard in my life i am tattooing that on my breasticles oh my god oh. what was it again <laughs> i got endings write don't <laughs> give a fuck oh <laughs> god man i think we learned that in the sopranos but yeah i feel like it don't it doesn't matter <laughs> who you are where you're from what you did because you're gonna probably die i'm bringing it very macabre now but you're gonna die <laughs> therefore like drake says yolo, yolo. that was a weird <laughs> emphasis on it yolo everybody yolo <laughs> but oh my god that's so good yes <laughs> please make the most of your life before because endings don't give a fuck they don't give a fuck they happen whenever they want i mean no fucks given with endings god damn that is I, I have got to get on that. I've, I'm doing, that's a segment on my show now because of you. Yes. <laughs> yes Motivational <please>. Mondays. <laughs> it, so in, go, if you go to inspirobot.me, if you just click a button, it'll generate a quote instantly. Instantly. Oh my God. 
<laughs> I am giving you all of my writing credits for that one. That is <laughs> so goddamn beautiful. <laughs> oh, amazing. Well, I'm trying to you know tomorrow. what? Now, now that we're inspired, I feel like we can dive into these questions. So let's do it. We've got this first question. It's found by our fan Tiff. Thanks, Tiff. Oh, that's a lovely name. I love Tiff. I've only I've only met one Tiff and and she was terrific. That was bad. I'm really sorry. She was tiff- <laughs> she was cool. She's all right. She, Continue. Uh, tiff, you better be all right. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. We don't want to get in a tiff with Tiff. So she found oh, this question up. on Reddit. It says, Should my roommate and I open a strange package that showed up without a return address? So just Damn over press. a year ago. Yeah, so just over a year ago, someone dropped off a package at my apartment door. It was addressed to our apartment, but not us. Judging by the makeshift label, it wasn't delivered through the postal service because it was written in marker, had no postage stamps or marks, the address wasn't formatted properly, and it had no return address. We've debated what to do with it. My roommate wants to open it. I do not. What should we do? Bomb squad. Call someone else to open it. Yeah. That's it's... what I would do, but I'd take it somewhere else, not inside my house. It could be a glitter bomb. It could be a real bomb. It could be flowers that are dead now. That was for this girl. I don't know. Tiff, you oh. should have just, why did you wait a year? That's my biggest question. A whole a year. Time. And now you're like, oh, well maybe I'll open it. Are you hoarding something? What's, why did you <laughs> wait so long? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, where is this? That, how big is this box? And what space is it occupying? It sounds like hoarder behavior to me. If you've just got this big old box, this might be a bomb. And you're like, it could be a baby. It? Could have been a child or something. Now oh. this kid has no life or is forming inside of this box. I don't know. That is how baby Yoda was discovered. He was <laughs> technically in some sort of box. And then... <laughs> Uh, It was open and a cute little surprise was there. And that could be for you guys too. But baby Yoda is now decaying because of you. But you know, if it were baby Yoda, it would use the force to actually get out. So I Uh, I highly doubt it was a baby Yoda, but uh, that's true. Oh God. What? Okay. So let's say they did open. And now I'm like, okay, well, how big was the box? But if they did open it, what do you think it would have been? If it was, okay. So let's say it was about and for all the audio listeners i'm putting in maybe an arm's worth i would so say like 12 a foot yes yes exactly i should have said okay. a foot yeah material <laughs> okay so <laughs> a, a medium sized box i think it may have been mm, if it was unmarked written in marker maybe cookies i send cookies sometimes like a I don't, I care don't package know. Yeah, but it was just left at their house. Oh my God, this is too deep for me. I have no idea. Oh my Uh, God. I'm trying to think of something even comical that would happen. Normally it's an Amazon delivery. Oh my God, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to be dreaming about this and thinking about it at night. What was in the box? I'm just going to be watching seven all over again. (laughs) I had a segment about what was in my box a while ago. Oh, I love uh, what was in my box. The new segment. I love it. <laughs> oh I my think, God. I think it could have been, yeah, I think it was homemade, whatever it was. Because if they're putting it in just some box and writing it in a marker, maybe it was clothing. Maybe it was cookies or some sort of sweet treats. Maybe it was uh, toilet paper. If it was a year it ago. Could, you. Oh my God. I'm, I'm more concerned that they're talking about it a year later. That's the thing that bothers me. I want to call Tiff right now. What's her phone number? We're doing it. No, I'm just right, like, here, Tiff, this I'll is Mo it. from Alt Z. No, <laughs> open the damn box or don't open know, the box. Right? I'm not sure if we've decided what, but but still, I mean, don't you mm, this is what frustrates me a little bit because there are people that like to talk about things and there are doers. And I think yeah. that there's a certain amount of time for you to be able to talk through things. But the real successful people, they do. So make a decision. And because this this box, to get a little deep here, this is like a space in your mind that's being occupied by a tragic event or something that happened to you. And if you don't explore that, open up that box and be like, 
well, yeah, that's, that's true. My dad did bang my mom on a waterbed while I was laying there. <laughs> if that box remains closed, it's taken up that space, but you've opened it. And now it's this wonderful comedy for us to be able to enjoy. And um, hopefully it's the sting has gone away for you, Mo, but it is a hilarious story. So I'm going to share this podcast with my mom. I'm sure she'd appreciate it. <laughs> she, I remember she told me, she's like, please don't ever tell this story to anyone. And I'm like, I can't guarantee that mom, you know what I do for a living, but good God now. Yeah. Now I'm thoroughly upset about this box. So thanks a lot, Tiff. Yes. God. It's, oh God. Well, well, um, I think we can move on from the box and just let it linger in our minds forever. So we're going to move on to the next segment. This next segment is called <laughs> Positive Spin. And so what I, I created this segment because all the time when something bad happens to me, I think, oh, no, I am going to be late. I'm stuck in traffic. Blah, blah, blah. Instead of thinking of the negative thoughts, I've created Positive Spin. So there's going to be a scenario and we think of the positives around it so that we can start to train our minds to think positively when bad things happen. I like that. I am so in for this. Now I'm trying to find a positive spin on why I'm here, but it's really tough. Continue. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I was, wait, I was going to say here in general, in life, or just here on this podcast, because I can't answer oh, on the either podcast. of those. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really can't answer either. I'm There's just... a silver lining to everything. And I hate to say it, but there even was a silver lining to this pandemic if you took advantage of it. That's all I'm going to say. Continue. Yes, I agree. I, I mean, this podcast alone, I was able to take the silver lining of everything was shut down and get some guests that were, I mean, one of them told me, I think it was Brad Williams. He jumped on and he was like, look, man, if somebody says no to you right now, it's because they don't like you. And I was <laughs> like, is that why you said no the first time? But kidding but but no you're right I think that there's a silver lining to a lot of different things and being able to to find that silver lining is just the quest of life to lasso it in and then bring it home and I, that is why I'm here is for you to lasso in everything in this podcast while I receive we, it wait what we, okay we, sorry we, we've brought it full lasso circle and now <laughs> All right, so Mo, this actually, this positive, this scenario, I know this might be near and dear to your heart. So season three, oh, man. Mandalorian comes out. Yes. Baby Yoda. I forgot his, what's his name now? Titus? Grogu, you son of a bitch. Oh. Grogu. Okay, sorry. Grogu. I'm just a bit of a fan. Is that <laughs> Nobody calls you... him Grogu though. Everybody calls him Baby Yoda because it just yeah. makes sense. It describes everything. Okay. Exactly. I'll stop getting exactly. hostile. No, I agree. And I was going to ask you, do you think that Grogu is a, an adequate name for Baby Yoda? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I feel like I've grown to love just the name Baby Yoda. Yes. It's weird. I'm like, people that call Baby Yoda by his actual name are serial killers. But then I just corrected you that his real name was Grogu. So I might be a serial killer now. You know, what? I'm slowly it's, taking steps. So I'm, I'm just trying to unveil all these things. It's been a rough the silver lining is, is I'm not in your house. So that's a good thing. <laughs> Thank God for those car troubles. I, oh, Lord. <laughs> I was going to say too, I think that Grogu, when I imagine a Grogu, I imagine this big Rocky type character because the yes! Grogu, it's almost like, Rawr. so I feel like if they just, if they just pivoted on the vowels and they called it Grigi, that would be a no, cute... no, no, that sounds worse. That sounds even worse. <laughs> that sounds like that sounds like something it sounds a white like an Italian call slur. Their <laughs> oh, that my God. over there. That sounds like a slur, and I'm canceling this oh, right no. now. You know I'll have to edit that out in post. I was also gonna say. <laughs> It sounds like something a white person would call their grandma. Oh, my Greggy's coming over. Oh, yeah, she's made cookies. That's so funny because I call my grandma my Goya. <laughs> so I totally understand. I'm like, damn it. He hit the nail on the head. It's really bad. Oh, oh God. Amazing. <laughs> but only because I could not say her name, uh, which is Gloria. So I just kept saying Goya growing up okay i'm done you. <laughs> it, it's okay you don't need to explain i called my grandma I, 
I called her Nona, actually. Nona, I've time. heard Nona. Yeah. Uh, Italians call Nonas. Yes. Nanas is for Hispanics sometimes. I find it weird when white people call their grandmas Nanas. I don't know why. Yeah. I feel like they're just stealing parts of my culture and trying to <laughs> inject themselves into it. I'm like, learn how to make a burrito, then talk to me. Maybe we can be friends. <laughs> you, Maybe use some you know, fucking seasoning and we could be friends, okay? All right, sorry. Just a pinch of salt. That's all it needs. That's oh man. absolutely the, the fights my wife and I had the first year where <laughs> she she loved the seasoning and I was just like, I like it bland. No, I'm kidding. I'm Italian. Oh my I like God. my seasoning. I thought you were going to flip it on me like, that you were telling her to season, but turns out you're just Dude. a trash person that doesn't like any flavor. Oh, which I'm I can tell. Garbage. I mean, look at everything behind you. Everything. I mean, it matches your skin color. I wasn't <laughs> sure if you were actually going to come through, if this is like a weird green screen, reverse green screen thing. It was very strange. <laughs> it's, it, you know what? I, oh, it's the houses in in arizona the colors that mm -hmm. they are it's like my appearance is like tempe and phoenix camouflage i will blend right in they'd be like where did stefan go oh i'm right here guys in front of the house because i'm just like this plain old beige to like this dark beige which is like the 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 wall and the roof of the house so i basically i look like a little phoenix house and it's horrible <laughs> What are those? Uh, you look like a swatch. You look like a swatch of beige. That's, what you, that's the whole aesthetic that you've got going on. You're not even white. You're a beige person. Possibly oh translucent. I'm not sure yet. Like oh Conan O'Brien is. Oh my God. Yeah, exactly. My wife calls me Beige Bay. So that is. <laughs> beige Bay. Name. Beige, beige Bay. No, oh, BB, come here, Beige Bay. That, you know what? We're going to have to get you a new license plate. No longer the lasso king. You're Beige Bay. Oh, my God. I that should worried. be a rapper name, dude. Beige Bay. Oh, my God. Killing them with these beige beats, y'all. Oh, oh I, dude. You're going to go. Up. You're about to be Mr. Worldwide soon with all of this. Oh, my God. That let's is beautiful. start. Let's start at Mr. 602. And then I'll, you know. <laughs> It's like the pit bull plan. You start out in the area code and then you do because he went Mr. 305 and then he went mm -hmm. something else. And then he went 305, Mr. Mr. World. It, what? Was there another really? one? I thought it was 305, Mr. Worldwide. I thought that was it. And then pit bull. That's an audacious jump. Don't you think that is from a like a zip jump. code or, a, or an area code to like, <laughs> okay, it's the world now. All right. I'm Mr. Worldwide. <laughs> How could you be everywhere at once? I don't understand. <laughs> he is a hologram, people. He's not even real. <sighs> and he's so formal, too. It's not like, oh, call me Pitbull. It's like, hey, excuse me, Mr. Worldwide. And he has to remind dale. you every... Yeah, da dale. <laughs> oh, man. So, all right, we'll work on that. But this... So, Mandalorian, Grogo, not... not Grogu, not Grigory. <sighs> he passes away. Why would you say that? We're having a good time. I cannot be without my baby Yoda. But to be fair, baby Yoda is the new Groot. So like, of course, of course. But let's not talk about that because I will cry if anything happens to him. Oh, okay. All right. So no positives to be found from this. <laughs> okay. There scenario. might be That's a positive. Fine. There might be a positive. But I'm curious, what positive do you think that would be? My life was worse before Grogu. Before oh, Baby you, Yoda. Now I agree. have something to talk about. That's the only reason why I care so much. And for everybody to compliment me because everybody loves him so much. So I got the backpack. I got the t-shirts. I got, I didn't get the animatronic, but I really wanted him so I could take oh. him everywhere. I you know. know what? You, all you need is the podcast, Gabin about Grogu. And <laughs> you'll be. <laughs> with Beige Bay. <laughs> beige with Beige Bay. I need some sort of snap type thing to go along with that beige bay. No, you know what? That would be off brand. Beige bay. That's more with, <laughs> with the beige palette. So I feel like that's a little better. All right. So, <laughs> so I will add one thing that I think might be positive from all of this. I think okay. if baby Yoda is extinguished, then he won't get to the stage of teenage Yoda 
where he's gonna be a little oh cunt. My God. So nobody's gonna I say like the that. word once, and you keep going with it. <laughs> I'm sorry. And the no, person I use it on is little Grogu. Oh, poor little. <laughs> I know, I know. But you're right. I mean, look at teenage Groot. He was kind of a dick. Like That's nobody right. liked him. Oh man. So how, 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 how will he be? Uh, oh. Something I, happened with your audio. Yeah, I accidentally touched something I shouldn't have touched. My hands got excited because I was talking about five uh, hundred year old Grogu or whatever. How old is he in the in the series? He's fifty years old. He's a middle aged man, and he's still a baby. So, at right. what age is the question? Is like, at what mm. age is he a teenager? You know, is it two hundred years? I oh. mean, what is preteen? I mean, preteen Grogu is what we need. We oh need. My. One that is a huge fan of like, I don't know, the Knights of the Republic or something. And he's just like really excited. Maybe the Knights of the Republic can be a boy band that he's really into. There's a poster in his room. He's got I, Machine I don't Gun know. Kelly posters as well. Because he's really. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, too soon. Too soon. <laughs> God damn you. <laughs> uh, but so... yeah, that's exactly what would be in his room. <laughs> like <laughs> instead of instead of a sexy nurse, it's a Twilight in the nurse's outfit instead, giving away the vaccine, the COVID vaccine shot. I don't know. I mean, like it could be so many things. So many. God. So many. So I know, but there I I don't know. I kind of want to see, you know, young Grogu and his adult over 18 years. Maybe he starts an OnlyFans account. Maybe, uh, maybe gets a DUI. You know, he makes some bad decisions. We got to see that happen. I like a good redemption story too. So if he <laughs> falls to the dark side, gets a DUI, it, it, you too, know, <laughs> too many of those macaroons he was eating. Maybe oh, it ends yeah. up he's crushing them up and doing lines of them. I mean, gets he was divorced. addicted. Yeah, divorced. I mean. Do you watch Robot Chicken? <laughs> oh, I used to. I loved Robot Same. Chicken. There is an episode of, uh, or they did a skit with uh, Senior Mutant Ninja Turtles. Like when they gr- get way older and they're in a nursing home. Uh, <laughs> they cowabunga in their pants all the time. I, one of them dies. I, I mean, and they're all at the funeral. It's so good. It is so good. If you get a chance, just YouTube that clip. It's probably like 15 seconds long because all of those little clips are they're so good. Is that but an yeah, old that's one? What I, I think I remember that one. Yeah, that it, it's I okay. I don't know if it's like one of the first three seasons because I think those are the okay. only ones I had on DVD nice. when that was really cool when people still did that instead of streamed everything. Do you own DVDs and, or do you shame people that do box sets and DVDs? Oh, snaps, <clears> I got no, excited. no, no shame. No shame whatsoever. I have, well, my I inherited DVDs. So they're like step <laughs> DVDs to me. But I have so sweet. Do you did you adopt them yet? Or um, you know, not quite yet. I'm like, look, they still call me Stefan. They don't call me dad. And um, it's it's a little tough, but (laughs) I I have you're really pushing on them, that dad. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe if you let them call you beige bay, that could be (laughs) they might respect you more. You think about that? Yeah. Beige bay. Yes, it's beige bay to you. Thank you very much. (laughs) Go to your room. And put yourself in the DVD slot and press go to play your entertainment center ready. right now. <laughs> Get to your VCR. Oh, wait, no, that's DVD or that's v- VHSs. I can't. But you know Words what? Hard. I do, the, and acronyms. But I do want to say, <laughs> I do want to get rid of them. They need to go off to college immediately because, like, five of them out of six have Channing Tatum. And I <laughs> fucking hate Channing Tatum with a fiery passion. Really? I have never yes. known anyone to hate that man. But can I just say one of my favorite cameos he's ever done was in uh, This is the End. Beautiful. Oh, yes. I still, oh my God, where Danny McBride is using him as a sex slave. Yes. Yes. So good. So good. I was not expecting that. I was dying in the theaters. I, God, that was so good. <laughs> I yes, I loved that, and I, I I that actually made me like him a little better, knowing that he would make fun of himself like that. But oh my god! So are you um, jealous of these Channing Tatum movies? Do you feel like there's an expectation that you can't live up to in your wife's world? 
that yes. she's like, well, I guess I'll just settle for this guy. He's kind of funny. Yes, exactly. Absolutely. He matches the wall. Yeah, yeah he's so kind I, of funny. So I don't have to pay attention to him. <laughs> yeah, he just blends in with everything, including our, our furniture and wall. So I think Channing Tatum, my wife had a huge crush on him. And we, I watched Magic Mike one and two three times oh, because no. my wife for her it. for her yes you're you're a good husband i i would never do anything like that i wouldn't subject anybody to something like that but go ahead continue Not oh no it was person. she's great it was it was magical it was she, <laughs> we, did we he do had card this... tricks what's this movie about <laughs> he pulls doves out of his hat it's, it's, <laughs> it's not like you would think the trailers are totally misleading <laughs> I would love to see that movie. It's just Candy Tatum <laughs> being Chris Angel. Mind freak. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my God. That would be um, uh, incredible. <laughs> we should pitch that to Mr. Tatum. <laughs> like, you know, we should make our own movie, but like <laughs> spell Mike with an M-Y-K-E. Just totally throw people off. You want, did you watch the new Magic Mike? Oh, it was weird. He... <laughs> He chopped some girl in half and it was, it did not go well. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. He's just bad on top of everything. He's just super bad at magic. I think we could, we and could you know never what? find my card. We, yeah, we could call this magic Mike three. Cause he does three tricks and then people will think it's the trequel and then they'll watch it. Clickbait magic Mike electric boogaloo. That's the only title that we're going for. <laughs> One title and one title only. Magic Mike. <laughs> yeah. Electric Boogaloo. Electric Boogaloo. Boogaloo. <laughs> Even though it's supposed to be for two, but that's fine. Uh, <laughs> we'll so past it. you have watched a lot of Channing Tatum. Okay, well then who is somebody that you would want to subject your wife to? Is it in like Salma Hayek movies or or what? Oh, if I, if I, so if I could have her watch any movies, what would I have her watch? Yeah. <sighs> if you had control for once in your life. Mm, oh god if i oh, i can only dream but i feel like it's just going to be nothing but the godfather is that what you're going to say all italians say that right no <laughs> you know i actually i only i would love her to see that but i don't know i think that's a really good question i would probably have her watch comedy movies she's not a huge fan into comedy movies. the hangover i'd have her watch that yeah who doesn't like comedy movies that's all i grew up on like Jim Carrey movies, Robin Williams movies. Uh, yes, gosh, yes. I mean, there's so many. And then, you know, when I get older, Will Ferrell movies and yes, just anything that made me laugh. Uh, that and like gory action films, like that's what I loved. And I, I feel like if you can't enjoy that, I can't, I don't want to sit here and watch Boyhood. I don't want to be with you. You sound boring as shit. Like there's no way. Uh, sorry, continue. No, that's triggering no. for me. <laughs> Just no, no, it's, it's okay. It's, you know, it's open silver lining. It's opened up my palette for entertainment. And now I, I like, I all watch romantic movies and the, where we meet in the middle is romantic comedies and oh boy, are they hilarious. And oh boy, do they have a great romantic message. Love oh them. boy. Did, did she pay you to say that? Cause that did not sound genuine. <laughs> oh boy. I thought you were going to say babe. like you opened up, I thought you were going to say like you opened up your, you know, your taste buds, if you will, to uh, like Bollywood movies or something, but no, it's rom-coms. That's what really did it. <laughs> I will say out of the TV that we watched grit Britain's greatest bake off or whatever the hell it's called now. There's so many people addicted to that show. I don't get it. It's not oh. master chef. It's I don't so, know why that's my shit. It's like it's like headspace plus cooking, competitive cooking. Yeah. Everybody's so nice. That's the problem. There's no drama in that. The, yeah. The, They're well, like, there's... well, I lost and that's okay. But, you know, I got to make some great friends and we had a nice cup of tea and everything was all dandy. I don't know. What do they say over there? Is dandy a word? Nah. <laughs> they say pretty much all of that verbatim every time. But it's so soothing. And the more you hear it, the more you're like, oh, everything is. There's nothing Dandy. soothing about British people voice. No, n not at all. Could you fall asleep? I tried falling asleep to some British person doing like those guided meditations. And the whole time I'm just like, this is so annoying. And I'm awake for three hours instead of actually being asleep. <laughs> Wait, was it, was it, uh, hi, I'm Andy. <laughs> oh my and God, I'm yes! 
I'm here to tell you. He gives a disclaimer aware. in the first. He's like, please do not listen to this while you're driving. <laughs> As it could, he was actually so he got accident. he got his fame from Great British Bake Off, and then he started Headspace. Uh, and that's a lie. That is a huge. <laughs> I was like over here, like totally believing it. I was like, that sounds legit. Sure. He hypnotized the <laughs> contestants and then he had a bunch of other time to be able to make something delicious. Hi. Every time they'd be like, we know your name. Hi, I'm Andy and welcome to this pecan pie. Like, okay. <laughs> I feel soothed, but it tastes awful, Andy. You shouldn't do this anymore. So. <laughs> to add the sugar oh my god <laughs> <laughs> use salt instead <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh man all right well speaking of sugar this last question it comes from reddit found by fan tyler thank you tyler ty mm-hmm. maybe ty judge it up it says can i pretend that i don't have a tooth after letting it decay for over six or seven years <gasps> oh my god <laughs> <laughs> yes. can you pretend if you can feel it i don't know how much longer you know who's not pretending the people smelling your rank ass breath because you hadn't taken that tooth out and i should know because i had a tooth that was dead inside of me for a while until i decided to pull it out with like a string or something next how did now, you know it was dead i could smell it i could smell it. i was a kid i was younger and i like was afraid to go to the dentist or any doctor really because oh. they're going to tell you what's wrong with you. And then you got to face the consequences, but you don't have to face the consequences. If you don't know, ignorance is bliss. And that's oh, how I led man. my life in my junior high years. Didn't work out say, well. Did your tooth, <laughs> did you have your mouth open while your mom and dad were banging and the tooth saw it and was like, <laughs> Oh no, that. I'm out done. <laughs> Something died in me. And it was the tooth. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little piece of me that died. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Incredible. And I kept it for years. <laughs> oh, that is. By the way, I was going to ask Mo, have you, you're hilarious. Have you ever tried stand up or are you interested in it? It is one of my biggest fears. And I've always, I dream and think about it in my head, how it would go. Yeah. But then I know it would not go that way. And so I'm afraid to get up on stage and do it. But I've always wanted to just try once. Maybe if I were drunk. And I was like feeling froggy and I would like get up on stage at Tempe Improv and take the mic from like Tom Segura or something, just start busting out a five minute, you know, in between his set. I want I'm going to let you finish Tom. But... <laughs> yeah. I'm going to let you finish, but I have one of the greatest jokes of all time right now. So <laughs> <laughs> it happened when I was six, I was laying in bed and that, I'm just <laughs> yeah, it was supposed to be a silent night, but then it turned <laughs> All was not calm. All no, was not. No, it was right. not. <laughs> it's oh. so funny too because I legit have motion sickness. I'm not sure if it's because of that, but like I can't r- do things in a car unless I'm driving. Don't I can't I get no like roller coasters, all of that I can't do unless I'm like really high or I have dramamine, dramamine. Oh yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Dramamine. I blame yeah. it all on that waterbed and my parents. And oh, you know. There's a lot. I'm so sorry. you're. I'll stop you're talking saying, about that. No, no. I was gonna say. So you're saying you you don't have a waterbed to this day. <laughs> I just can't. I just can't. I don't even go swimming anymore. <laughs> I'm so glad that you didn't end up coming over in person because I, th- these two chairs are water chairs. So. God damn you! <laughs> <laughs> They've got a little fish in them, a little baby Yoda toy, a little Grogue. <laughs> Now I just want to see a chair that has like little Nemo's just floating through some goldfish. <laughs> that would be actually pretty stellar. I would, I would definitely look at it from afar, but not sit on it. <laughs> that would probably be one of the things that could be in that unmarked box that the people oh have been God. sitting on for a year. <laughs> they could I have would... been sitting on it. Literally. <laughs> Damn. Oh man. Well, water under Instead the bridge. Look at this box. <laughs> Yeah, or water in the chair. I'm not sure. Water all in right. the chair. <laughs> well, now that we've exhausted all of our advice fluids, I'm going to wind this up. 
beautiful transition. Yes. <laughs> yes. Mo, this was a wonderful, wonderful time. Thank you so much for joining again. It was great to have you. <laughs> You know, uh, thank you for inviting me yet again. I love everything that you're doing. I love being on this podcast. I love talking. And anytime you want me back, um, I'll make sure my car's broken again. So (laughs) thank you so much. (laughs) I could see you just cutting wires in there. Oh, yeah. yeah. I stabbed my own tires. (laughs) I'm like, dude, I'm sorry. Somebody came through and slashed my tires. (laughs) <laughs> but really, it's just a picture of Slash on my tires. Mm. Oh, that was clever. Oh, beautiful. And- oh, that got me pumped. <laughs> Mo, I was going to ask, what have you got going on? Where would you like people to follow you? And what would you like to plug? Uh, feel free to follow me on any social media platform uh, at M-O-R-O Radio or Moro Radio. Uh, I got lucky and I just ended up with the same name everywhere. So it's easy for everyone, nice. including me. I also use the same password for everything. If you want that, it is, no. Um, Beep. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, it's Rob's phone number, which you just saw earlier. So, <laughs> uh, I'm oh, gonna ruin Rob. Myself. Um, you know, check out my podcast, Nostalgia. I, we dive into just nostalgic things and everything getting rebooted and just kind of poking fun at stuff. And uh, if you listen to the radio still, because you're archaic like myself, um check out 93.3 in phoenix uh, or on the app or or don't whatever just thank you (laughs) and there will be a link to all of that in the show notes and then for i'll I'll also include a link to the machine gun kelly interview for everyone that wants to watch yeah and you know what i was so afraid to read those comments for the longest time and then i finally did and everybody uh, there was only one person that was like this girl sucks but then like there were 20 other comments saying the same Aww. thing you did. They're like sweating. And then they're like, but she pulled it together. This girl's a bamf. And I was like, that's sweet. Thanks. That's what, yes. So that's what I trauma. thought. And oh man, <laughs> brave, brave of you to read comments. I didn't realize how, how scorched <sighs> one could be from comments on the internet. What's the worst comment you got? <clears throat> well, I ended up, I, I interviewed Mark Norman and then he put the video up on his page where everyone is a super <sighs> diehard fan of his uh-huh. And I got scorched and somebody oh. said, I think my favorite comment was he, he acts and laughs like he's playing a spoiled prince in a high school play. <laughs> <laughs> Did you and have was, the same style, the Lord Farquaad thing going on? Yes. Oh. And when I laugh, it's like, <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> it's perfect. It's so good. Oh my God, dude. That is but so good. I respect it. That one was like a good one in terms of it was funny and a, a little bit of a dig, but not, not, I don't think it was insulting or anything like that. But no, 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 no. Nothing to like make you cry over it over a few days span. Like I did with machine gun Kelly. It's fine. Oh no. No, oh. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'll stop. <laughs> oh, well you did. You did phenomenal there. And this was a phenomenal episode. So I'm really, this, this is the silver lining of, of the day, I guess. I would say so. I had a good time. Thank you so much. Uh, heart uh, let me send hands. you a beige heart, Mo, <laughs> and just to match with the palette. I don't think I'll see it if it comes through on text, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to blend in. Oh, God. All right. Well, <laughs> listeners, you guys have been fantastic. Thank you so much. If you made it this far, pat yourself on the tush because you just you did it so yeah we and give you consent to do that please do yes please please do <laughs> if you're feeling it well as you touch the end we are at the end so thank you so much and we'll talk at you next week bye everyone